Hi everyone, this is Dan with Shaner Designs. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do surfacing with sweeps and lofts. So to start out, we'll just create some curved surfaces and then join them together to create a solid. So I'm just going to make a sketch here. I'm going to speed things up so you don't have to watch me dimension everything. But we just want to make a rectangle that we can uh, then extrude and have a nice base to work off of. So we'll go half inch and then select the front plane create a sketch. Now I'll add a spline feature. I'm not going to fully constrain this, I just want to um, kind of eyeball it and get something that looks about like what I'm going for. So I do want to add one dimension here and I actually wanted to flip that around the other way so that's easy, just click the dimension and then over in the left here we can reverse it. And then again, I'm just going to drag that point to get something that looks like what I'm going for here. Okay, so now that we have that first spline, we need to select point and create a reference plane for the second spline. So we'll select the point and then the top face of the extrude, make that parallel, hit OK. So now I'll create a sketch on that perpendicular plane, plane 1. And then I'm just going to hide the extrude and all the reference planes so it's easier to see what's going on. Now I'll create a spline. And just like before, we don't really care about dimensions right now. We're just trying to get the rough shape, get the curvature that we're looking for for this project. So lastly, I need to constrain this so that I can do a sweep. So I need to select the endpoint from this the spline I just created, and then the previous spline do a pierce. If I did a coincident constraint, it would look right, but it wouldn't work for the sweep, so it's important to do that pierce. So now I can just continue to drag the handles until everything looks right. And then once I'm happy with it, I can exit the sketch. So there we go. So next I'll add a swept surface. So I'll go to surfaces, swept surface, and then select the first spline as the profile and the second spline as the path. So now you can see the profile just follows the tangency of the path. So that's actually not what I want to do, so I gotta go through and find out what what option changes that. So it's not those, so I go to Options, and then Profile Orientation. Instead of Follow Path, I do Keep Normal Constant. And what this does, it just um, makes that profile go in a linear direction instead of twisting around the path. If I wanted to, I could add Twist Control too, which uh, changes the way that, that surface is formed, as you can see here. So if you want to play around with that, this is how you would do that. But for this project, I don't want any profile twist. Okay, so now we have our first surface. So now I unhide that extrude so I can make sure everything looks right. And what I want to see is that those two surfaces are connected. Okay, so next I'll use the surface that I just created to create a reference plane on that edge. And then I'll create a sketch on that plane. And what this will be used for is a planar surface. So I'm going to convert the entity right there, that way I don't have to try to trace that. And then I'll insert a line. And then again, this part I don't need to dimension, but I do want that line to be vertical. You can see it's black, so that's fully constrained. So now that we have this sketch, we go to Surfaces. And planar surface. So that fills in the sketch, creates a planar surface. Uh, now that we have that, make sure everything looks right, which it does. So that's good. Now next we'll use the front plane. This is the plane we created the sketch profile on uh, for that first surface. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to line up with this, this new sketch. So I'll convert entities, 
And then I just use the spacebar there to change the view. That's a handy feature. Uh, but now I'll go ahead and connect the points with the line. Except I closed out of that too early, so I just got to go back in and edit. Add that one more line. So we can see that's all closed in. I'll go back to surfaces, planar surface, and hit OK. So that all looks right. So everything's connected. I'm going to add a point here. So that point will just be important later when we go to loft the feature. So that all looks good. Okay, so now that we have both of those surfaces, I'll do a surface loft using the edges of those surfaces. Oh, that's not right. I need to go back and delete these and then use selection manager, select group, and then uh, I need to select both of those edges together and make that one open group. And let's see here. We'll do the same thing there. Select that edge. OK. And then for guide curves, we'll do the top edge of that swept surface and then the edge of that extrude. So there we go. Everything's closed in, no gaps, all smooth surfaces. So I'll go ahead and hide that extrude. And then looking at the bottom here, you can see it's still open. So I'll go ahead and select these edges and create a planar surface. So now I have, um, what is that, five surfaces that are connected, but they don't form a solid, so I need a knit surface. And then select each of those. Now you notice this create solid command uh, just became available when I selected the last surface. So once everything's closed in, you can select that. So now I'll show the extrude, and then we can cut a section view and see what's going on there. So now we have two solids, but they are not joined together. So uh, if we go to Solid Bodies tab, we can see we've got two separate bodies. What I want to do, so I'll go to the filter selection so you can see a little more clearly. So we've got this one and this one. So I'll eventually want to join those together, but first we'll do a mirror. So now we'll do a mirror. We want to mirror bodies. So I'll select the first body, and then I can either select this face, or I can go to the tree and select the front plane. I always like to work on planes wherever possible. Uh, it's just a more solid reference. And then merge solids, hit OK. So now you can see we have two bodies. So we've got the mirror and then the boss extrude. If I go back and edit and uncheck merge solids, that creates a third body. So depending on your application, that can be a handy tool to have. Now lastly, we'll do a combine add and select all three solid bodies and hit OK. And now you can see we just have one single solid body. I won't go more in depth in this video, but you can always change your surface loft or your surface sweep change those settings or change your sketch profiles to change how these surfaces are formed. So I think that wraps things up for this video. Please like or comment below. Let me know what you think. If there's any content that you want to see in future videos, definitely let me know in the comments. That's always good to see. And if you found this video useful and want to check out some of my other videos, I'll post links up here. But otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.